Hi everyone, this is Dave and welcome to my full review of the ASUS Zenfone 4. Now if you're watching this live you can take advantage of the live chat and if you're watching this after the live event then please do always leave me a comment. I'll try and answer as many questions as I can. Now the ASUS Zenfone 4 has been with me for just over a week, about a week and a day and I've been using this every single day and I want to share with you my experience with this. Before I share with you my opinion of the Zenfone 4, I know that you like to go through the specifications and the various features of the smartphones. So I'm going to do that first, just so that you've got all of the information you need, and then I'll cover off how I've been using this, my experience with the smartphone, and if my overall opinion of this is in fact a buy or a not to buy. So let's start by just taking a very quick look just at the physical sort of aspects of this and then we'll dive into the main specifications. So it's a really nice looking smartphone. It is available in different colours. This one is sort of a pearly white colour. Very, very thin, a nice sort of metal band around the circumference of the phone. Obviously glass on the front and we come to the display technology in a short while. On the back we've got a dual camera setup, one of them's ultra wide angle, 120 degree uh, field of view on the wide angle camera. We've also got a really nice front facing selfie camera, a fingerprint sensor, USB-C and speaker on the bottom plus a three and a half millimeter audio jack which is really nice. Now I will go over all of the specification but just the main parts are that this has got 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage plus a micro SD card slot so you can add expandable memory and it supports up to a 2 terabyte micro SD card. So let's jump across to the screen view and have a look at the main specifications. So we have got this available in Moonlight White, which is the colour I've got here, and it is really nice. I think it's because of this sort of concentric sort of circle pattern that catches the light on the back of the phone. And also available in Midnight Black. As I mentioned a short while ago, 64 gigabytes of storage uh, built in and up to two terabytes of micro SD card support. You also get 100 gigabytes of Google Drive space free for a year, which is a nice bonus. Weighs in at 165 grams, which is sort of average for this size phone. 5.5 uh, inch display. Now it's a super IPS display, so it's not AMOLED, uh, which I think is nice because you've got good viewing angles, none of this color shift business going on. 1920 by 1080 resolution, which is plenty for a 5.5 inch display. 600 nits of brightness, I'll show you that in action in a short while, it is very, very bright and really slim bezels, 2.1 millimeters either side of the screen. We also got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 660 or 630 processor depending upon which um, uh, sort of region you buy this in and four gigabytes of RAM. Now the main camera on the back uh, is a 12 megapixel. Uh, we've got an f1.8 aperture and an 83 degree field of view. We've got various Pixel Master camera modes. This is one of the big selling features implemented in software that ASUS do to their cameras, and it works extremely well. Now the secondary camera on here is eight megapixels, 120 degree wide angle camera. Uh, video recording supports up to 4K, 30 frames per second, 1080p, 60 frames per second. Uh, we've also got electronic image stabilization in here as, net, as well, no optical image stabilization. The front camera is 8 megapixels, and then we've got the various other specifications here, all, all what we, uh, we uh, term as standard in smartphones nowadays. Uh, of note though, the audio output via the 3.5mm audio jack is high res audio, supports up to 24 bit, 192 kilohertz. So that's a really nice additional feature. So now back to looking at the smartphone itself. Now I mentioned this is a, a really nice white color, but it's got this sort of concentric circle pattern on the back. So it catches the light really nicely and gives you this really nice pattern. It just is a very nice looking smartphone. Now a nice 5.5 inch display uh, and a really nice shape. So it's very, very comfortable to hold. Now quite easily they could have put the fingerprint sensor here, that's my favourite position for fingerprint sensors. But they did in fact put it down the bottom here, 
and then the touch sensitive buttons for multitasking are actually off screen so they're in this panel down the bottom and also the back button so we've got multitasking and then the back button there the uh, fingerprint sensor also acts as a home button so for example if we're in our app tray we can actually tap this to go back home I do like that that's probably because I've been using iPhones for so so many years and I've got used to having a home button so that's really nice to see it also acts as the fingerprint sensor so if I lock the phone and then I put my finger on here sort of tap it unlocks so tap again it unlocks or indeed and I'm just using the power button on the side I can unlock using the power button and swipe or I can tap again to use the fingerprint sensor so it works either way and I find that just tapping on here is really good but you can't just place your finger on it has to sort of feel some sort of you know some sort of effort on the uh, fingerprint sensor to unlock it in that way a very gentle touch sometimes it misses not very often maybe one in a hundred times it might miss that that sort of fingerprint going on there but a really nice way of unlocking nice and secure as well the actual screen is very nice not the highest of resolutions as you probably guessed I don't know if I can get this to focus in but the pixels are really tight knit and I think it's a nice resolution screen for this size it goes up super bright at the moment I've got it almost down to the lowest level that's full brightness <laughs> you get a suntan from that no that really is full brightness and it's so so bright uh, you can have it to adjust um, automatically depending upon your surroundings we've also got all of the quick panel uh, sort of changes here as well so we can jump into uh, cellular data airplane mode flashlight so we can turn the flashlight on and off on the back of the phone etc uh, etc et so there's lots of uh, sort of quick settings here and now this has got the um, ASUS overlay over the top I think they called it their Zen UI and I quite like it uh, there's a second panel of settings there as well by the way I know you can't see that very well but you can go across to a second uh, panel for FM radio audio wizard uh, one hand operation do not disturb etc now as mentioned we got the Zen UI over the top here and I, I think it's really nice let me just go into the settings it's one of the areas that where I think they've done a really good job of the overlay I like the way that the various settings are laid out I think it's really nicely done uh, very fluid as well you just saw that there when I'm scrolling no sort of lag it's just very very responsive now if I go down to about phone it tells me here that it's running Android version 7.1.1 out of the box this is a new smartphone now I haven't heard anything official on this yet but I would expect this to get Google Android version 8 in a, an update sometime next year uh, we've also got this pull out drawer so when you're in settings you can actually pull this out and then this tells you uh, sort of various other settings you can go into on this side panel so it's sort of a duplication of what the main settings panel does but it is another way of getting into things I also like the color coding on the settings page as well and then of course to go home because we've got that button down the bottom there we can tap to go home really very very nice indeed absolutely love it now as I mentioned before the uh, processor is very responsive it's a nice turn of speed in this would have liked to have seen six gigabytes of RAM but alas we got four but it still seems to be really nice I've noticed no sort of uh, sort of slow down when I've got multiple applications running the camera and the interface is very very good indeed we've got a really nice interface on the camera HDR mode supported as well and I took some photos of this over the last few days I showed you some of these in my initial impressions we've got this one here I took of a Christmas decoration and it's really nice colors wanted to show you that one again nice detail as well and I also took a picture just behind me here of my Funko uh, pop figures and again so so much detail a nice white background on there really nice sort of uh, lighting no, no noise that I can see it really very very clean photo and then we've also got this one here that I did uh, which was just to sort of experience the wide angle view of the camera so that's a little shot of where I'm sitting now and it really does go nice and wide 120 degree uh, field of view I also took that of my storage area which you can just about see 
behind me here but a lot of people ask me questions about this what are all those uh, boxes behind you there and there they are in fact my storage for my videos um, and it's just a really nice camera it really does perform well video recording it performs nicely as well I've been very very impressed with that now before I move on to your questions just touch very quickly on battery life I know a lot of people ask about battery life day and a half easily between charges uh, I would say if you're low to medium user you might even get two days out of this but certainly if you're a heavy user you're hitting this hard you're gonna get a full day if you're a medium to heavy use you're gonna get a day and a half between charges so really good battery life uh, quality the actual build quality is amazing this feels like a very luxurious smartphone and that's down to the finishes that they've chosen on the back the materials they've used and just the the attention to detail uh, with the way everything is seamless it fits so nicely and it's very very comfortable to hold so anyway let's jump into the live chat as always the first four of you into the live broadcast get a shout out a big hello to david hepworth best tech ljl who i've been talking to on twitter this morning uh, matthew geeson and also neil sudan thank you very much for tuning in and indeed to the rest of you for tuning into this live review of the zenphone 4 Let's see what questions we got. Uh, Deepak Murthy uh, says, Good morning, Dave. Merry Christmas. Is the software smooth or laggy? A Merry Christmas to you too. Uh, the software seems very, very responsive. They must have optimised uh, their overlay, but certainly uh, it seems very, very responsive. I'm not seeing any sort of dropped frames, anything like that. It just looks really nice. And we've got some extra anim animations that the Zen UI add to Google Android here as well. So it's doing a little bit more than stock Android and it's coping very, very well indeed. Uh, Best Tech LJL saying, by the, way, by, by the way, guys, Dave is not well. Yeah, we have been talking on Twitter this morning. And in fact, I had to wait until my throat was uh, a little bit better so that I could do this video for you. Just a little bit of a winter cold, but we will soldier on and get through this video. I absolutely love doing the live broadcast. There was no way I was going to miss out on bringing you my review of the Zenfone 4. And indeed, uh, just to let you know, a little bit of housekeeping here. This is indeed my last live broadcast. I'm kidding you. My last live broadcast before Christmas. It's not the last one ever. This is the, the last live broadcast before Christmas. Do tune in on Christmas Day at 3 p.m. GMT. We've got the alternative Queen's speech, a little bit of a tradition that I'm doing. Uh, I've done it for the past maybe three or four years. So tune in at 3 p.m. GMT on Christmas Day for the Geeks speech. And then, of course, the following day on Boxing Day, so the 26th of December, first thing in the morning, I've got a really special video going live on the channel for you. So do tune in for that. And if you're not subscribed already, Hit that subscribe button. Let's see what other questions we've got. Um, Matthew Geeson asking, how much does it cost? It's around about the £500 mark. I think it's 499 plus delivery. Uh, I think I saw somebody. Yeah, Best Tech LJL put it costs £507 direct from ASUS. And that is for an unlocked SIM-free smartphone. So really good deal. You're not tied to any contracts. You can just buy a SIM only or a pay-as-you-go SIM if that's the way you want to go but there's some great SIM only deals available and then you just buy the smartphone outright and you own it and then if you want to change smartphones you're not tied to a contract you can just sell a smartphone and change to something else this is really nice though I think you would hold on to this for a long long time this dual camera setup on the back I think ASUS have done really well in the way that both they've done it optically but also implemented it into the software uh, Best Tech LJL says Dave ASUS say it's up to 6 gigabytes of RAM I think it depends which model you actually buy. Uh, this one's got four gigabytes of RAM. I think I remember reading it somewhere, either on the box or on the specifications. Uh, but this is the four gigabyte version. I certainly read it somewhere. Yeah, very small on the back of the box there. So this is the, the four gigabyte RAM version. As far as I know, as far as I know, it must just be different uh, areas and different model numbers get slightly different uh, specifications. 
Estum Rolf says, is the Zen phone worth the money? I think for this sort of price, if you're looking for high quality hardware, and I prefer that there's a lot of overlays that you get on Android. Different manufacturers do different overlays. And I prefer the Zen UI overlay on the Zen phones compared to some other manufacturers. I'm not a big fan of EMUI, which Huawei and Honor put on their smartphones. Uh, and I'm not a big fan of TouchWiz. I know it's been renamed, but the Samsung overlay, I'm still not a big fan of it. It's much, much better. I think this is very comparable to what LG do. Uh, so the LG, I think they call it their Emotion. Oh, I'm not sure. What, not sure what LG call theirs, but LG do an overlay, and it's very, very similar to the Zen UI on here. Uh, and I like it. I like it because it's nice color-coded, uh, but overall very clean and crisp overlay, especially when you're going into the settings. That's where you're going to notice it quite a bit. Uh, any thoughts on throttling or Apple throttling processors from Warwick Sylvester? I should address that in a totally separate video. But I think they have been caught red-handed and they probably had their lawyers uh, in a big discussion, big meeting, saying how can we limit the damage to our company? So they're doing damage limitation. They put out this official statement as to why they supposedly throttle iPhones or older models of iPhones. And I think there's going to be plenty of class action lawsuits. In fact, there is already one in the United States. If they win that, then it means that everyone who has owned an older smartphone will most likely be entitled to compensation. And I certainly hope they do one in the UK and in other countries as well. And Apple learn by their mistakes because it will hit them hard in the pocket. I know they've got a very healthy bank balance, but it will hit them hard. But that's slightly off topic, and I think we'll talk about that in one of the future uh, Q&A sessions. Uh, Deepak Murthy, does it have stereo speakers? Not as far as I know, but the speaker does sound very nice and it does also um, uh, give out a nice volume, a nice crisp, clear sound. Uh, Best Tech LJL, does it have NFC? I'm pretty sure it does. Let me just have a look in the settings. I'm sure it's got NFC. I read it somewhere. And yeah, it has. It's got NFC. Yeah, we would expect that on most smartphones nowadays. So this does have NFC inside. Uh, Jake Willis, what phone do you have and would you ever contemplate changing? I would always consider changing. If something better comes out that's going to serve me better, then I most definitely would consider changing. My actual daily driver at the moment is the OnePlus 5T, which I think is a great value for money smartphone. If I had handled this beforehand, I might have been tempted with this though. Because I really do, I like the design of this, the actual feel of the hardware, a little bit better than the OnePlus 5T. But certainly the OnePlus 5T specifications on paper outshine this. But this is a really nice experience. Been really, really impressed. Uh, Eshtum Ralph says OnePlus 5T has the same price then. Yes, it certainly does. And it is a difficult decision, very difficult decision. Uh, Warwick Sylvester, I'm quite annoyed as I've just bought an iPhone 8. If I'd heard that before, I wouldn't have got one. Well, even if you hadn't have got an iPhone 8, you'd have still had the um, slowdown or potential slowdown on your previous generation iPhone. So you, it's really hard. I know exactly where you're coming from. Uh, I don't think Apple are going to change things. They're not going to stop throttling uh, the uh, older version of, uh, of iPhones. So would you have benefited by not buying? Possibly. Possibly you would have had that feel-good factor that you weren't feeding their pockets anymore. Uh, but certainly, yeah, it's a difficult call whether to upgrade or not. Uh, we've also got Neil Sudan confirming it has got dual speakers. Well, I, I didn't really hear that in the audio. I didn't get that any separation uh, in the audio. Just a very clear and nice volume from the speakers in this. Uh, Deepak Murthy, which one has better cameras, the Zen phone or the OnePlus 5T? It's a different sort of camera on this because we've got the secondary camera giving a wider angle of view. So if you like that really wide angle photography, then I would say this. The OnePlus 5T, however, did have a small update which included updates to the camera performance. And I'm really pleased with the, uh, the clarity of the photos from the OnePlus 5T. However, that said again, and I know I can't make the decision for you because it's very subjective in what you like in your photos. I've been really impressed with this. 
especially lower light photos, this performs extremely well. In fact, a little bit better than the OnePlus 5T. In well-lit scenes and outdoor scenes, I think they perform pretty much the same. So it's a very, very hard call. Very hard indeed. Uh, David Hepworth saying that Apple should let you downgrade and they should also upgrade people's phones. So they should, and I agree with you, they should give you the option as to whether you want the speed to drop as battery life or battery health on your older iPhone suffers or whether you want it, keep, want it to keep running at full speed. They should give you that option. And that's part of this class action lawsuit. We're not talking about uh, Seuss here, we're talking about Apple. But that's part of the class action lawsuit in America is that you weren't given the choice at the time of purchase that when your battery health degrades in an iPhone, whether you want Apple to indeed um, slow the iPhone down. So that's, that's part of that class action lawsuit. But anyway, as I say, we'll talk about that in a totally separate video. So I'm going to sort of bring this video to a close now. Uh, the, the Asus Zenfone 4, very, very good screen, really nice screen. The IPS display gives you really good viewing angles. None of the color shift problems that you get with OLED. Uh, we've also got a nice resolution, full HD on a 5.5 inch display, I think is a sweet spot. I think it looks very, very crisp indeed. Nice, smooth text. Really good colour accuracy on the screen as well. The colours aren't too punchy. They look nice and natural. Uh, sometimes uh, when you compare this to something like the Pixel 2 XL where people say the colours were too muted, I would say this is somewhere in between that and a Samsung Galaxy S8. So a nice sort of natural looking colour with some, some colour pop, color pop. Nicely saturated in fact. It's a really good job on the screen. I also really like the build quality. Love the way the cameras perform, like the way we've got that wide angle camera as well. Uh, 120 degree field of view is really nice and it takes some great photos with that secondary camera. So that's well worth noting if you want that sort of dual uh, angle camera set up. There's been a lot of manufacturers implementing dual cameras in different ways. Some people have been doing it for improving low light, like on the OnePlus 5T. The LG range of smartphones have in fact been doing this wide angle Thing for a long long time asus have done it here and they've implemented it very well and i think where asus have done extremely well with the zen phone and indeed the zen phone 4 is in the way they've done the camera user interface they've got lots of features packed into software which means you're going to have great fun taking photos with this just also touch on the front facing camera really good selfie camera very very good indeed overall performance over this past week has been good I know only time will tell whether it slows down after you've used it for six months. I can't comment on that. And battery life, again, very, very good indeed. So if you're looking for an affordable smartphone with a decent spec, really good cameras, and amazing build quality, I would say this is a really nice feeling smartphone, very luxurious feeling, then this is well worth checking out. So that's it for this review of the Asus Zenfone 4. My last live stream before Christmas. I will see you over the Christmas period. So do tune into the Geek and Noise channel. Don't forget to also tune in in the new year when the live broadcasts start again. And I want to wish you all an amazing Christmas, a happy new year. And also ask you one last time to hit that like button. And I'll see you all in the next one.